Hello, Pitbull. This is the answers to the Q&A. I posted on my Instagram, said the top 20 or so most liked questions. Um, I'll come on here and answer. We're all sitting at home, home quarantine, coronavirus. You guys know, you guys are also at home. So I'm gonna be answering some of these questions. Some of them are funny, some of them are serious. Um, hopefully it gives you some needed insight and things you guys are looking for. So let's start right off the bat. We have, of course, the scariest wipeout of all time. And I, so I posted the video of the wipeout breakdown at Tropes. While that wipeout was bad, that was just a breakdown of the wipeout. That wasn't my worst wipeout ever. Um, or let's just say there's a difference between worst and scariest. So that wasn't my scariest wipeout ever. My scariest wipeout was in Tahiti and it was at Chopes. It was um, a paddle session. I think it was 2018. We were there filming for there and back again and it had just been like the normal swell. It was really big. This afternoon was really, really violent, really doubled up crazy. And me and Koa were going back and forth um, as we always do. And he had gotten a bomb and I just knew that I, the day before the swell had been big as well and I hadn't gotten what I was looking for. And I was like, okay, like you, you go into a zone, right? You go into a zone where you're like, I know I'm gonna make an attempt at um, the wave I've thought about in my mind and it's gonna be scary. And you kind of go into this extreme high adrenaline, high focus, like Koa is, it's super funny our relationship in the water, especially because he can notice when I've gone into that zone and he'll be like, fuck, are you gonna send a bomb? And I'm like, yep. And I can't even laugh, I'm not joking, I'm not smiling, my normal personality. It's more like I shut down a little bit and my the amount of adrenaline I have, I'm just vibrating, okay? So I'm just like mentally preparing to give full commitment to a very big wave. So, set comes, first one, not what I'm looking for, Koa goes, Next one, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is the one, this is what I'm looking for. Um, I started paddling hard right away, and one of the local boogie boarders down there, I think his, his name is Alvino, he was looking at it and he goes, go, go, this is the one, the paddle one. The boogie boarders paddle way bigger waves than anyone over there. And when he started yelling, go, 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 I was like, that's it, I'm 100% committed. I looked at the wave one more time, head down, didn't look at it again, scratching as hard as I could. Um, scratching, scratching, always you feel like you're getting picked up at chopes, like pulled up the face. Start getting pulled up, get to my feet, and I said, oh fuck, I am not gonna make this drop. I'm, I'm too far in the lip. And I just slammed down on my front foot, and I got over the ledge somehow and didn't disconnect. Perfect, smooth drop, I could not believe it. No disconnect, no sliding, nothing. Just perfect rail engagement in the water, get the biggest drop I've ever had out there. So it was long and I was like, I knew as I was dropping in, I was like, oh my God, this is this is the one, like this is one of the biggest waves I've ever paddled out here. I believe it was bigger than my one in 2015, which was the wave of my life. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. At some point I'm gonna do a video on that. But I make the drop and I look up and the view of this barrel, I kid you not, it was the biggest, widest barrel I've ever been in. Bigger and wider than any Jaws barrel I've been in, any outer reef spot. This thing looked like an oval, like this. And there was so much room for one second. Usually as soon as I get off the drop, I do a huge pump. I was literally frozen. And I just was just riding in this pocket and like, fuck move. And I did this huge pump and it inhaled and I came through it. And then I just saw the West Bull fold over. And it just looked, I, I've never had that experience in my life where I thought in my head, I'm gonna die right now. This is it, I'm gonna, there's no way I can survive this one. I've, I've pushed it too far. And this is like, this wave was 10 seconds long in totality. So if, if you can imagine, the, the, these thoughts are happening in a different time, time space. I, it's the weirdest thing, but as soon as I saw that West Bowl go over, I thought, I'm, I'm gonna die right now, I'm too deep, and this barrel is too gnarly, and 
I had a padded vest on, but that was the moment, that was the most scared I've ever been in the ocean of dying, I think. And it was fear, but it was also like, oh, this is it. And I just prepared and all of a sudden it power wedged and shot me forward and I almost came over the foam ball and I knew I would have fucking made it if I had done that pump right off the bottom. But anyway, the beatdown wasn't super bad. It was crazy. I, I got forced forward. I made it through the West Bowl and then fell into, into like the end of it. And I'll roll the clip on here so you guys see this wave. Um, got sucked over, pounded, boom. Felt like I was bouncing off on huge clouds. It's not, it was violent, but not super crazy. Somehow I was avoiding getting pin, sucked down to the bottom. Didn't touch the bottom, under forever. Oh, I'm gonna get two wave hold downs. Lucky there was no second wave. Finally I popped up, and I popped up to see Koa, who had gone on the first one, scratching towards me. He said he thought 100% I had died. He said, he saw the wave and he was like, Nate just fucking died. And I came up, and he grabbed, and he grabbed my hand, and uh, we're looking at we're looking at each other, and we just both just started screaming, yelling, "Fuck yeah!" Oh! Psyching, like your adrenaline is so high, you just feel like a crazy person. But I was just, I thought I had was gonna die, and I didn't, and it was one of the best feelings ever, like the highest I've been on adrenaline. So I mean, that took a long time to answer one question, but. We'll get through them. This is gonna be a long video, I guess. That's scariest wipeout. I'll play the clip and you guys will see. Uh, there's a photo that Dom got the local photographer down there and it's the best photo I've ever had in a barrel. Uh, to this day, that was the best wave I've ever paddled, I think. Didn't make it, but it was bigger than my 2015 one. All right, next question. What's your best advice for backside barrel riding? Backside barrel riding is extremely difficult um, as far as when you're going from beginner to advanced, I would say, there's this crazy learning curve and it's such an awkward thing. There's different things in technique. You say you're grabbing your rail, you really don't want your knee to be outside your arm on your rail, you want it to be tucked in. Look at uh, Jamie O'Brien, John. I do it here and there, but a lot of times my knee stays outside on the drop because I feel more stable, then tucks in um, once I'm going down the line. Tucked in knee. So again, this question is, what is your best advice for backside barrel riding? And I would just say, as I always say, practice, 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 practice. You gotta practice. And the drops are the most important part. Big sandbars, steep sandbars, practicing that. Um, always take the drop first, if that makes sense. So a lot of people, the biggest mistake I see is they get to their feet, they grab their rail, and they turn and lean over looking forward, looking towards the exit of the barrel and down the line, and they haven't even taken the drop yet. And they either get caught in the lip and go over the falls, or they put their front, because they're looking, their pressure goes forward, their fins pop out, they slide backwards down the face. Sorry, Zord, text me. They slide backwards down the face, you get worked. Um, those are the two most common mistakes. So I would just say, watch your, the nose of your board, get on your rail and stay leaning back. You want that weight back. The drops are gonna be steep back to the barrel riding most of the time. Um, and you're probably not that worried about the drop if it's not steep and you've made it into the barrel. Once you're in the barrel, pumping on your rail, so holding your rail in your hand and trying to pump backside, very hard. Jamie O'Brien, best in the world at it probably, but it's super awkward, it's hard to get right. You wanna pump, but not do huge movement in the barrel, right? So once you start that huge movement, you can get into a ping pong effect and, and bounce around all crazy, um, which obviously you fall then. So it's a weird movement, it takes practice. You can practice going down the line, grabbing your up humping. For me, the ultimate thing in back, backside barrel riding, no hand pump. So get off the bottom and you need a bigger wave to do it. You can't do it on a smaller barrel. So, so it's, it depends where you're at in your, in your surfing. If it's smaller than backside barrel riding is going to be on the rail and that's just that that's for everyone. Bigger wave, biggest mistake I people see is holding onto the rail and not utilizing, letting go, 
throwing the arms, getting those huge pumps in. Ooh, ooh. Um, I remember, again, I have had so much time in Tahiti and it's taught me so much. Tropes has probably been the greatest learning experience for barrel riding um, in my life, not pipeline. It was all at Tropes that I started um, really getting my technique down the barrel and I was there with John and Albie and I had fallen on every wave of the trip, sending it on bombs and I was like, fuck, I can't keep falling. And John's like, listen, you have to let go of your rail. You're holding onto your rail, you, you're not pumping in those big barrels. You have to let go and do a no hand pump last wave of the trip, let go of the rail my first time. The freedom I felt, the maneuverability, huge pump around the foam ball. And at that time, it was like the best wave I've ever made out of Chope. So huge learning curve right there. Again, um, if you're on smaller waves, then you're gonna have to deal with, with uh, pumping on your rail. And it helps a ton to have your knee tucked inside your arm. And just little wiggles, little movements, boom. Boom, it feels kind of like that. Rip, 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 over the foam ball, navigating. Um, again, practice, practice, practice. I could do a whole video on that, and I probably will at some point, but hopefully that helps. A couple of little pointers for you guys. Drops, take the drop first, eyes on the nose, lean back, knee inside the arm, pull in, small movements on those pumps if you're on your rail. If it's a bigger wave and you have to move, then let go of that rail and get that big no hand pump going. Boom. Let's see. I'm gonna move on because this is taking a long time. Do you like to smoke from time? Do you like to smoke reefer from time to time? 146 likes on that. Big misconception. I don't smoke weed at all. Um, I guess because my eyes are always fried. Or maybe it's my demeanor or personality, I don't know. I don't smoke. I did a little bit when I was younger, I messed around or whatever, and then stopped, it's not for me. Um, I'm super high energy, and from my experience, it just makes me crash down. I don't like it at all. Um, I'm more of a caffeine addict kind of guy. I'm drinking coffees and Red Bulls and Runas and pre-workout all day long, um, so no. No weed, I do, I take CBD, you guys know that, CBD MD. Um, it's made from hemp though, it's not made from weed, so pretty much zero THC in that. And that's the, as close as I get. Moving on, when you first started surfing big barrels and heavy waves, how did you transition and how old were you? What was it like to be pre prepared before you start paddling in? Oh, what is it like to be prepared? So, when I first started, um, I had an insane sh year of wiping out. Like, I had the send, but not the skill yet. And those are the most dangerous times. Some people never grow out of that stage. They never really get the technique down. They have all the send, and those guys that you see start to get injured. They have huge wipeouts too consistently. Um, the biggest thing is, you, your body makes instinctual changes on those wipeouts where the, you you're mentally know there's great consequence. You have a ton of adrenaline, and when you make adjustments and have a successful ride versus a wipeout, I feel like those instinctually stay forever. But the fact is, you have to go through the beatdowns, the wipeouts, the failures to learn. Um, there's no getting around it. You're not just gonna make one switch and, and be there it's more of a mental game honestly you can't get set back by big wipeouts but instead be inspired by them man I almost made that or finally I made that drop like I had ways where I was like that was the drop in my life and I ate shit in the barrel and I didn't care at all I was like that drop was the technique I've always dreamed about and I could feel it and I'm gonna do it next time and then I'm gonna make that barrel so it's taking steps right and you just gotta get out there and do it more and more and more. Mentally, for me, the thrill of it was just the draw, the the adrenaline. I remember I was probably 15 years old. I went on a trip to Australia with the Godowskis brothers and little did I know I what I signed up for, but the first wave we went to was ours. And I paddled out and 
I was so scared of that wave. It was like six foot and I was absolutely terrified. And I felt this horrific pressure on myself to, to get a wave and I, and I just couldn't do it. I was too scared and I was so embarrassed. Like, man, I, I can't do what these guys are doing. I'm too scared. I'm such a wuss, like obviously thinking all of that. And, and I remember just having this insane pressure on myself about it. And the night before I couldn't sleep, that day I went and paddled out to ours. I didn't get a single wave. I paddled in and I just felt this like, I don't know why, I didn't care for it. I just felt like this disgust for myself. Like you had that fear and you didn't conquer it. You just let it overcome you. And I was like, I was really bummed at myself for it. Um, a week later, we chased the same swell down the coast to ship sterns and I'm like okay you know what I'm never gonna feel like that again I'm never gonna let myself down like that again hey babe hi babe I'm doing my Q&A oh. there's babe there's my fiance hello sorry Costco rent. Costco rent so um yeah we chased the swell down to ship sterns and I remember just being like this is it I'm not gonna let the fear overcome me again um, I don't want to ever feel like that again. I want to like, and we guys were with Mark Matthews, freaking Hippo, like guys that are absolute units. Like they were sending it so hard. These guys overcome fear for a living. And I was like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm gonna impress these guys. Like, and I remember we, same thing. Got out there, and the fear just started overcoming me. And I was like, damn it, like. I paddled out, and I just couldn't commit to one. And I was, I was really, really, really stressed about it. And then Mark's like, grab the rope right now. Gave me no choice. And I said, okay. I grabbed the rope, towed me into a bomb. I was so nervous that my legs and muscles locked up. And I get into this thing and I face plant at the bottom. I face plant and I'm like, this is it, my nightmare. This is why I didn't, I was so scared to do this. I'm gonna like get broken or something. Either. I got sucked over and just lightly landed in, in foam. No beat down, I popped straight up. And that was literally the turning point of I just fell, all my worst nightmares did not come true, I'm totally fine, I popped straight up, and like I can do this, I'm not gonna die if I have a wipeout here and there. And that was the whole mental shift for me. We went back out, I got another wave, I wipe out again, and this one I got pounded on. Pop back up, Nothing's broken. I got hell under, I got water in my nose. I was scared, but the adrenaline rush, I was like, I'm on. Went back out, got a third one, and it was like, at that time, the way of my life. Like the biggest, craziest, I was, almost fell. My knees at one point, I'm pretty sure, touched each other when I went off the step. <laughs> Super awkward, but yeah. So it was a pivotal moment like that. And after that, I knew, I was like, this is the direction I'm going. Like the reward feeling of like having overcome the fear and like, and just gone and done it and been forced to do it and, and not being hurt after a wipeout and realizing like these guys do this all the time and they survive. I can do it, I can survive. That was it where I'm like, I'm going all in, big slabs, big waves, power, all that. I want it, I want this for feeling again. Um, so yeah, that was a fun little story. I don't think I've shared that before. What was it like to be prepared before you start paddling in? I think I briefly touched on that. Um, you're always scared. Always scared. Before every swell, I get scared. If you're not scared, then good on you, but you're off. I mean, I believe wholeheartedly that the fear protects you. From making really bad decisions, um, you're more tactical, your adrenaline is your savior, you're stronger, you're more well equipped and your, your reflexes are so much faster when you're in a state of fear. It's just whether you say, yes, I'm scared, but I'm gonna go anyway, or you're like, I'm scared and I'm gonna go back to the boat. I've had days like that still. I have days where I'm just like, you know what, I, I really just don't feel it today. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not gonna go on a bomb. I'm just gonna surf really carefully. And I do, and I feel ashamed sometimes after. It's just the way it is. It's just this pressure you put on yourself to perform. Um, 
but most of the time I get pretty psyched and and that feeling I know what the feeling is of having overcome it and having a good day because of it and that's what I chase that's what I chase in big wave surfing that's what I chase in surfing in general okay moving on growing up with your brothers how did you manage the process of taking separate paths through your teens to now keep crushing um so i've seen it a couple different questions i'll answer them all this i've seen some other people ask um what was it like being in john's shadow getting out of it or this and that are you jealous of john um me and my brothers are super super competitive very competitive but there's never been there's never been a jealousy type of feeling for me john was always on such another level even when we were younger he's two years ahead of me but when we were younger i just didn't care to put the time in you know i would rather be playing in the water and he was out there practicing and practicing and practicing and my mom would send us to the beach go surfing go surfing I'd play in the shore break for three hours while he surfed and practiced. So he just put that extra work in and he got so far ahead performance wise that it w there was nothing to compete with when we were younger. Like, it was just, it was like, at that time it was like, I'm not gonna go, like now I wouldn't go onto a basketball court with a professional basketball player and be like, I'm gonna fucking take this guy out, you know? So it was always like that. I was more inspired. And once, it took me a little longer to get into the mindset i think i must have been 14 12 or 13 where i'm like i want to be a surfer whereas he was much younger and he was like i'm all in when he was like nine or ten so once i was like you know what i want to be a surfer um this is what i want to do i want to get really good at it then he became a source of inspiration for me because i had access to at that time one of the best younger sur youngest surfers in the world i could surf with him every day and learn and and try and replicate obviously that didn't happen um, he just continued to excel, 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 but I kind of went a different route. He was very competitive and excelled in competition in surfing. I froze up in actual contests, but I excelled in the bigger stuff um, when it was just me out there and me against the ocean or whatever. So I kind of saw that and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go all in on what I'm excelling at. And I did, and that's how we ended up where we are today. And even today, ask me my favorite surfer, it's my brother and my younger brother, Ivan, best style on the planet. You guys know that, you see him on the YouTube. Do we go surf and surf heats and, and fucking get freaked out and extremely competitive and pissed off after a heat? Of course, and I'll do that with any one of my friends, like my, all my friends, any session we have, I'm extremely competitive with them. But in a good way it's not an unhealthy kind of over aggressive or anything like that um so i hope i i hope i answered that for you guys moving on uh let's see favorite surf spot in the world this is so hard because I love to do errors now, so maybe it's log, a, a logs left at home when the wind's cranking, or perfect pipeline for the just abundance. You have an incredible right and an incredible left in one spot. Or do I want to get the wave of my life and go chase a swell in Tahiti or at Jaws, you know? Um, I don't know. Chopes has given me the most. Pipe has given me a lot as well and I've learned a ton out there and been able to have it in my backyard and use it for my career to a massive advantage. Jaws has excelled my big wave surfing to new levels and everyone's. Now people, instead of just taking off going straight, people are pulling into barrels and doing turns in the pocket. It's hard to say, but I'll give you a top three. Pipe, Jaws, Chopes. Cranking winds and the logs left for air camp. Okay, next. Okay, we're moving down here. If you couldn't surf as a profession, what would you see yourself doing for employment? Also, what are you taking to lunch 
on at your new job. Um, this is funny. I have so many different interests. I'm all over the place. But honestly, I love training so much. I think I maybe would have gone into trying to be a professional CrossFitter and who knows if it would have worked. I don't know if I have that kind of iron or some type of endurance background, something in the fitness world. I'm such a big fan of fitness and the elite crossfitters, the stuff those guys do and the level they're at as athletes is like, gets me so hyped, I'm so inspired by them that um, I think I would try and try and do something in that realm and hopefully I'd be eating cleaner but you can't go wrong with sushi or burgers at any time, whether you're fitness freak or not, surfer or weightlifter. Hope that answers that. What should I do to become a better surfer? Put time in in the water, hours and hours and hours. I told myself, I didn't know how to do a fucking air. I couldn't land an air. So I didn't say I'm gonna learn airs in a month, I said, 2019, I'm gonna put an entire year into learning as any day there's wind, I'm gonna go out there and practice airs. Some days I missed that pipe because I wanted to just go practice airs. And now I can once in a while land one, and I'll tell you what, it was the most rewarding feeling ever. It took an entire year to learn, and there's so many terrible sessions, but you can learn and utilize YouTube and watching surf videos. That was what I figured out when I went back to when I was trying to learn something in surfing, whether it's technique on turns or or uh, learning errors. It's, I wanted to, I watched videos, I watched the best guys do it over and over and over again. And then I, in my mind, replayed itself. Where's my arm gonna be? This is how I'm gonna do this turn. This is how I'm gonna do the rotation. And with doing that over and over and over again, you're gonna get better. So practice, watch surf videos, study these guys, study, study, study. That's best tip. Um, what is your favorite food to munch down after you surf? I can always go for a huge double cheeseburger, but it might put you down. Um, I usually eat light throughout the day and then go huge at dinner. Pesto pasta, sushi, sushi is my favorite food. Good quarantine home workouts. I'm gonna do a separate video on this one. Um, a video purely devoted to keeping up paddle strength while we're sitting at home. Because paddle strength, paddling is the hardest thing to replicate if you're not paddling. Only paddling helps paddling, which sucks. But there is certain things you could do to keep your shoulders fit. I'll go into that. Longest time I've been held on a you, Many of you will be surprised to know I have not had a two wave hold down yet. I've had hold downs and popped up in the next wave, but it wasn't breaking. So I really I got lucky on that. I don't know, maybe it was 20 seconds, but 10 to 20 second hold down feels like five minutes. So <laughs> I don't know, I haven't had a two wave hold down and I, and I hate that I haven't because I know it's just there pending, but I would say 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, that's next. Favorite wax, Foo Wax. The best wave of my life. Best wave of my life is the 2015 Chopes ride. That wave, I believe, helped boost my career right when I needed it. And to this day, I have never had a ride like that in my life. Never have I had so many moments in one wave where I thought, I'm not gonna make it. Never have I had the spit grab me and lift me, levitating along the face to set me back down and I'm back and I'm on my feet still and, and it was a successful ride. That was the biggest barrel I successfully made, the biggest backside drop I successfully, no, never mind, that one I spoke of earlier was, but successful full ride on a big backside drop. And to this day, the wave of my life, um, even after a wave of the winter here at Pipe or Backdoor and Jaws waves, everything, that Jaws wave was the wave of my life and still is. Favorite recovery tools. Um, I use the Compex Fix. You guys have all seen those massage guns. I joke about it being the drill dough, but that tool is very, very, very essential. Easy to travel with. 
I'm so damn lazy. I try and stretch, I just can't get into it. I try and roll out as much as possible. It's really hard, it sucks, it hurts. The massage gun, at least you feel like good about it, you're getting a massage. Um, so I'll do that. I'll take tons of fish oils and I take CBD daily. Um, the amount of wear and tear my body's going through, I can feel everything start creaking if I'm not taking all. If I'm not doing all those in a day, I feel things start creaking. And it's not that I can't perform, but I know I'm not performing at 100%, if that makes sense. All of them collectively um, helps a ton. I take a green superfood powder also to get the vitamins in. Oh yeah, ice baths, I do. I do do sauna and ice baths probably two to three times a week when I can. Um, I do feel a difference. It feels the recovery, the muscle soreness, things like that it helps with. So sauna and icing, fish oil, CBD, um, Compex Fix Gun, very, very, very essential in recovery protocol. What's next? I take protein powder too, um, but usually just after workouts or after long surfs or on full days on the water, I'll bring Progenix, a big tub of, not tub, but uh, I'll have mixed it with water and I'll bring a big container of it to drink throughout the day just helps if you're on a surf trip and you have a day two or day three or day four of surfing how it usually is you want to maintain peak performance through all the days and not just blow it all out on one which if you don't provide nutrition on that one big day then you're going to be cooked have i ever surfed the east coast what's my favorite spot i don't have enough experience i i really want to make it over for one of those hurricane swells though Front side air tips. I cannot give any front side air tips. I only have wind in the lefts, and while I've conquered rotations backside, I need an entire year to do front side airs. I'm so frustrated by trying to learn front side airs. I don't know why. They're so hard for me, so foreign feeling, but that's this year's, one of this year's goals. What goes through your mind on a big wife out and what do you do to survive? Again, adrenaline is your is the greatest hormone ever. That shit is purely there for you to survive. Nowadays, I don't I don't have besides that one big wipe out, I don't have thoughts like, oh I'm gonna die right now. I just have thoughts of if I'm in a big wave situation, I'll calmly think, get a hold of your rip cord and pull your canister. That's stage one. And usually that's just a struggle, and by the time that's pulled, then you're on your way up. So, um, try and, people say stay calm. I don't believe you're ever really, really calm, but I would rather say don't panic and make bad decisions. Just underwater, realize, obviously it's not a calm situation, your heart rates to the roof and you have tons of adrenaline, and you're trying to fucking survive. And don't just sit, lay there like a dead fish and go to the bottom, you know? You have to fight or swim somehow. So, don't make bad decisions. Don't panic and blow your air out or something silly like that. I don't know who or how anyone would do that, but just just try and think clearly. Um, John decides to ask and gets 350 likes, the most liked comment on the Instagram. Did you recently become a duck or have you always been a duck? I don't know why he says this, on my Instagram, he does it commonly. His humor, uh, his humor is a little spotty. We don't always understand him, but we give him complimentary laughs every now and then. So, <laughs> pretty good. If I'm a duck, you're my brother. So, what does that make you? Moving on, Kyleni, have you run out of toilet paper stockpile already, or are you not using any to conserve it? <laughs> I'm eating the toilet paper. We had some toilet paper. We still have toilet paper. We didn't go buy a thousand bins of fucking toilet paper so other people couldn't buy any. I think that's the silliest thing ever. Like, get the toilet paper you need and go home. Don't buy out the whole store so someone who actually runs out can't go and get it. And the funniest thing is the paper, toilet paper right next to the empty shelves is the paper napkin piled high. You can wipe your ass with that too. I don't know. Take a shower. I don't know. I use toilet paper. Fuck. 
I told Kai I was eating it. Okay. I'm um, going into a little bit about boards. Boards, everyone, you guys gotta figure out what works for you. Um, my boards are super different than Koa's. He rides a lot thinner boards and, and those boards are different than Eli's or Kieran's. Um, all our boards are different. I like a lot more volume because I need to paddle. I don't feel like I'm the best paddler. If you're not a very good paddler, then you might want more volume. If you're a good paddler, then you want that real thin and maneuverability goes a long way. Um, on guns, I just want that knifey rail, four fins all the way. Every gun I have is a four fin, but I'm experimenting with thruster setups this year. So we'll see how that goes. Thruster setups on all my short boards and all my step ups. I don't do four fins on step ups. I don't like them, they slide out on the drop. Um, my favorite pipe board is a 6.6. Six. Uh, the volume's roughly 30, 31 liters on that thing. And real, real pulled in pintail and sharp rails. That's what I'll write at pipe or chopes um, as big as it gets. I will say though, the best wave I've ever caught out of chopes, I was on a 6.9 with thin, not that much volume. So it was longer, less volume. Now I go a little more volume and a shorter board. Uh, my favorite short board is a 6.0. I like epoxy lately. I've been loving, loving epoxy. I like the lightness. <sighs> what else can we go into here? I think that's it for now. I'm gonna double check on the questions and then we'll see. That's a 40 minute video, so hopefully you're still here. Okay, I just checked, there was a few more questions. So, um, how old were you when you first surfed Jaws and Pipe? Pipe, I uh, was young, maybe 12, 11, probably more 13 or 14 that I really moved into the pack, obviously at the bottom of the pack, and slowly over a long period of time worked my uh, way up to where we are now, getting waves at the peak. It was probably honestly like a 10 year, 10 to 15 year period. And that's like a pretty big misconception I think people have is they paddle out and they paddle straight to the peak and then they get, they get frustrated when they can't, they're not, either not allowed or they can't get a wave. And it's just that the people there have spent, put the time in and they are at a certain skill level and a hierarchy in the lineup to catch the waves from there. And if you're not there on that level, then oftentimes you don't make the wave. And when a good wave gets wrecked because you were sitting in the wrong spot, then other people are gonna be bummed on you. And that's just how it is at Pipe. That's the, the Pipe lineup has a total hierarchy from, honestly, it's based off of skill and time spent out there. Jamie O'Brien, Makua Rothman, Uncle Derek Ho, Uncle Mike Ho, these, these guys have all put in so much time. So obviously when they paddle out, they have priority. It doesn't matter if you were out before them and we respect their priority. So for us, we expect the same priority rules down the line and that's often how it is. And you could see a guy get on a roll and go on three or four waves in a row at pipe. And that is because oftentimes if you're in the best spot, someone's not gonna waste their turn to go from a bad position at pipe. Sometimes you get a good wave and out of your group, you're obviously in last priority. You're piling back out and you're in the spot way over for another wave. They're not gonna go because if they're too deep, just because it's their turn, they're gonna be like, oh, you're in the spot. And that happens a ton between, between our friend group and Jamie. And Jamie's the best at that, is picking them off on the way back out. And people that just haven't put the time in out there they just are under priority and they slowly move up the ranks as they surf there, foreigners or not. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll go into a bigger video on the hierarchy out there because many of you ask about that. And it's pretty confusing, but I can go into big details, but hopefully that explained it a little bit. Um, that was for pipe, I was like 14 where I really started getting good waves. And then wax, I mean, Jaws, I was, I think, 18 when I went over there for my first time. Waxer pads, I always have a tail pad and wax the rest of the way. The, I tried the front grip, hated it. It made the board really heavy and weird under my feet. Best way to start surfing bigger waves, air techniques. 
air techniques all about your head movement and and that rotation and studying the good guys do it I'll say that again I, I just studied and studied and studied and it's so hard to implement what you see them doing into your own surfing and it just takes a long time for it to happen but it does very slowly happen big waves is all about comfortability and skill level and overcoming your fear so again that's gonna be a timeline the more you expose yourself to something uncomfortable um, the more comfortable you are with it happening so you may go out and it's six foot and you're scared as shit and then you have an okay time and you don't die and you go back out and you know that you're probably gonna be fine so six foot again you're not as scared as you were before you know, you go out for the third time and now you're gonna send one of those six footers because you now have experience, you've watched it, you've observed it, and you know it's okay. So exposure to things you're afraid of help you to be less afraid of them. Advice I can't paddle for so long I get tired. That's just, that's a fitness thing. You, I get tired from paddling, but as Dory says, just keep on swimming. You must paddle more in order to get better at paddling. It's a total weird separate endurance thing. There is some workouts you can do that help, but best thing you can do is just paddle a ton. I'm a terrible paddler and I get frustrated all the time. Friends that are shorter than me have shorter arms are better paddlers than me. John and Jamie, best paddlers in the world, smoke me in a paddle contest. But endurance wise, I think I can catch more waves and paddle back out more without getting burnt out but that's a, that's a maybe. How do you prepare mentally for a big swell? Every time I am max capacity anxiety. I'm super scrambled, I'm all over the place. Honestly, each time I think this could be the one something bad happens. This could be the one that I get severely injured on or, or worse, and I have those thoughts every single time. It's never like, oh, I'm not scared at all, I'm just gonna go and fucking kill this big swell no I'm like worried worried but I am also comfortable I know my limits and one good thing I remind myself is hey I can go out there and if I'm not feeling it then I don't have to go on a wave and that's good for me because that takes a little bit of pressure off myself even though I'm very competitive and I want to get a big wave that day I told myself you don't have to go on the biggest wave you just go out there and check it out. And if all of a sudden you're in a good spot, then you know you can make it, then you do it and you go. So that kind of thing helps helps for me. I tell myself, it's on you. Just go out there. You can always sit in the channel. Um, obviously, the reason I'm scared in the first place is because I know that I want to get a big wave and that's just, what are you gonna do? It's like half your brain is saying, don't go out. Half The other half is get the wave of your life. I'd rather get the way of my life, so I listen to that other half a lot more often than not. So, mental preparation, just think it over. Obviously, risk and reward. Um, based off your skill level, whether you're ready, are you injured, are you feeling okay, did you just travel 46 hours, are you 100%, you wanna always be 100%. I've done it at 80%, it's not fun, but if you paddle out at 80%, then don't surf at 100% when it's bombing, you know? Risk and reward. Okay, moving on. What if your leash breaks at a far out break? I consider myself a pretty adequate waterman. I could probably fucking swim very far. I'm a really good swimmer, um, and that's luck. I just somehow have a way of gliding through the water. I don't know if it's my body shape or what, but I'm very, very, very comfortable swimming in from a far out spot. Main thing is, never go into, like people go into, swim into these rip currents because that's often where the channel is, but you have, to, you have to observe the situation. If there's a ripping current in the channel, then the fact is you have to get pounded in. That's what happens. I see people lose their reach, get sucked way out and have to get rescued. You have to wait for a lull, then swim in and get worked by a smaller one in. That white water is gonna push you to the beach. If you swim to the channel, the current's gonna rip you out. So 
if I could get one tip, it's use the waves to your advantage. All that water is pushing in, and in the channel, all that water is going back out to sea. So you have to sacrifice getting a little bit worked, time it with a lull, but use those white waters to push yourself in. How do you cope with being pounded at pipe every day? <laughs> it is exhausting, and by the end of those three day swell night benders, I think this winter we had a 15 day swell bender, you're burnt, you're mentally burnt, you're just, you sleep, I sleep 11 hours, I don't, I feel, wake up feeling tired, my neck, these are bars of iron, they're so stiff by the end from taking impacts to the head left and right, my neck is probably severely damaged, my traps are sore, my shoulders are sore, places are sore from wipeouts you don't even remember. I think being fit and healthy goes a long way to keeping going, but there's only so much you could do through those kind of those kind of situations. Let's see. Oh God. Sorry, babe. You could, babe. Oh, pterygiums. Yeah, I have huge pterygiums. I think people with lighter eyes get them worse. Um, Friends with brown eyes don't seem to have them at all. And I've done some research and read that people with brown eyes have that an extra, the brown is actually an extra layer of protection or something. They have, it just doesn't get the damage that people with lighter eyes do. I have to get these removed at something because at some point, because they're distorting my vision, I, I wear contacts. So without them, I'm pretty much blind. I've lost them during surfs and it sucks. But um, I wear the weeklies, which stay on a lot more in the water. So if you guys wear contacts, the dailies are horrible to surf in. The weeklies are way better. Um, so that would be a tip if you're blind like I am. But yeah, I have to get my trigeums removed at some point, which which totally sucks. Gnarliest break ever surfed. Probably the gnarliest slab is shipsterns or silverbacks. Silverbacks is the hardest wave mentally to commit to. Nazare absolutely sucks. It's a giant, I don't know, it's a giant beach break close out where you just get pounded that was my experience that we had one good event day where it was fun to paddle but otherwise i have no urge to go tow those waves and get worked on those things they're huge and the reward doesn't seem as high as it should be to me but people love it lucas chumbo performance freak out there kai lenny look what they did in that tow event so those guys kill it but nazare is scary and it's just not really for me Mavericks, very spooky. That place, the dark water, the cold, and the steepness and heaviness of the wave. Got one of my worst beatdowns ever there. Mavs is no joke. And on intimidation alone, I think there's nothing more intimidating than a maxing paddle swell in Tahiti and seeing that big mountain of water coming and knowing it's going to be a slab every time. Nothing more intimidating than that. How are we dealing with coronavirus in Hawaii? Um, it hasn't hit here that bad yet. We are quarantining and it's crazy because there's no one on the roads. It went from stop traffic every single day to there being nobody around. So that's kind of cool to see, but it sucks. The situation is what it is. Um, hopefully this will all get cleared up sooner and we'll all be back in the water and having fun. Let's see. Piper back door, uh, hard to say, but I think pipe is more rewarding if you get a really big wave. Airs or heavy waves, heavy waves are more rewarding, but I will say I've grown to love um, air camp and it's become one of my favorite all time things to go do in the water. Is when the wind starts and the waves, it looks crappy and blown out. I get psyched now. So the crazy thing is I'm in the water way more than I was before. Days I wouldn't even have thought about surfing, I'm putting two, three hour sessions in just practicing air. So it gives you something else to work on, which is super fun in surfing. How can you be cracking up while getting pounded at 50 foot pipeline? Like I said earlier, it's a comfortability thing. I've just been out there so many times and, it's, and so many cleanup sets on my head that it's just gotten to, obviously it can go very wrong and it has for some people, but it just gotten to the point where we start laughing when we're getting cleaned up. And there's just nothing else to do. Sometimes it'll happen 50 times in a session and you're blown out and you haven't even gotten a good wave. 
what are you gonna do? You have to just laugh at it. That, that session I was so stoked I had the GoPro gear. Got to show you guys what it was like with Kai Lenny getting, getting worked out there. And it is just a nightmare. There's, it's scary, but you're also like pretty calm. I'm pretty confident I can get into the beach um, if I broke my leash or whatever. So there's that, but yeah, you just have to laugh it off. And, and if you're laughing, then you're probably pretty comfortable and you're not panicking. So that's a plus. First brand to pick me up, Vans. I've been with Vans, they were my first sponsor and I've been with them for probably 15 years now. Yeah, I'm, I'm 25 years old now, so I think I've been with Vans for 15 years, which is insane. Uh, at 30, I'll hit my 20 year mark with that company. So, pretty rad. I think, I think that's it, I wanna say, I explained my scariest wipeout, but not my worst wipeout. My worst wipeout was at Mavericks in 2017. The swell, beautiful swell, huge, light winds, super pretty out. I had gotten a fun one in the morning. I knew I wanted a bomb, and uh, I'll throw the photo up here so you guys can see. I paddled for this wave, and it didn't look that big at first. As I paddled, it was jacking up on the slab, turned into a 20-footer, and I wasn't in it, but I was already committed. And I had to jump over the falls on like a 20, 25 footer. And I thought, whatever, I jumped, I'm gonna penetrate it and go out the back. Oh no, I went straight over the falls and that was maybe the longest hold down I've ever had. Never been dragged so far underwater. Never have I pulled my vest twice, two canisters, been fully inflated and not somewhat come to the surface. I wasn't going down or up, just sideways, violent ragdoll. My board broke in half, so I just had the back end of my board, and it was honestly like a sea anchor holding me down versus showing me where the surface was. I got, I when I came up, I was, I was seeing white, so lightheaded from not having oxygen, and the whiteness cleared, and I was looking at a probably it was the wave, the biggest wave of the day, was landing on my head. But lucky I got pushed in pretty far, so it was just a big white water by that point but I was in front of the rocks at Mavs. This is my first wipeout ever at Mavericks also. So after getting one of my longest hold downs ever, violently ragdolled, I go under this white water and it goes into a second super long hold down and I get thrown through the rocks at Mavs, flushed fully through, kicking off of them underwater. Mentally, physically, worst, most brutal, violent wipeout I've ever had. I wasn't super deep, just held under forever. My body was, after that one, that was one of the rare times I did not paddle back out. I got on the ski, I got on the ski. I planned to paddle back out and then I just sat there for three hours and I didn't, I didn't get off the ski again. I was just that shook up about it. And that exhausted one, it must have only been three minutes long, but it was the most exhausting three minutes I've ever had in the ocean, I think. So that was an interesting one. Uh, and I got the full package at Mavs for my first time. I had a fun one, I had a giant wipeout, I got washed through the rocks, I got held under forever, I got the full experience and I got it out of the way. And I love Mavs and I've been back several times since that. So it's not like I haven't surfed it again, but that wave is insane and that wave is gnarly, so brutal. Um, I think that's the last of the questions. I, that, I think that was either 20 or 25. Hopefully it answered most of whatever you guys want, were thinking of asking and and covered most of these. This, this was pretty fun for me, so maybe we'll do more. Um, that's it. Like the video. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. I don't know if this, this video might be like 50 minutes long, so hopefully you guys can make it through it. Hopefully there's some fun facts in there.